Okay, so ancient Greece. Right. We're talking marble statues, epic poems, democracy. Right. And then there's this guy living in a barrel telling Alexander the Great to, like, get out of his sunlight. Yeah. It's Diogenes the Cynic. Exactly. And uh, over 2,000 years later, people are still trying to figure this guy out. So that's what we're diving into today. Yeah, and I think what's really fascinating about Diogenes is, you know, he didn't just talk about philosophy. He, he really lived it. Mm -hmm. And he lived it radically. Yeah. You know, most people in ancient Greece, they were chasing wealth. They wanted status. Um, and here's Diogenes just giving it all away. Yeah. Literally living on the streets. Okay. But like, let's rewind for a second, right? For those of us who, you know, weren't philosophy majors. Right. Who was this guy? Who was Diogenes? Yeah. So Diogenes was a really key figure in uh, the school of thought known as cynicism. Okay. And this school of thought really took root in Athens. Um, around the fourth century BCE. Now the cynics, they were actually inspired by the Stoics who mm -hmm. believed in virtue and reason, but Diogenes, he he took it to like a whole new level, right? Mm -hmm. He rejected pretty much everything that most people considered essential for you know a good life, mm -hmm. material possessions, social status, even like basic comforts. Yeah, he makes those minimalist influencers today look like hoarders. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it wasn't just about having less, right? Like there was a method to this, to this madness. Yeah. Like what about that story of him, like walking around with a lantern in broad daylight? What was that about? Yeah, he was searching for an honest man. Right. I mean, it's classic Diogenes. And I think, you know, I, that story really sums up his style. It was performance art, but it had a philosophical point. He wanted to shock people, absolutely. But that shock had a purpose. He wanted to make them question their assumptions, like what is truly important in life. Yeah, and and he did some pretty shocking things. Um, I mean, this guy was like sold into slavery right at one point. He was, and and get this, he ended up tutoring his master's children. Diogenes had this incredible ability to to just subvert expectations. Right. Even in a situation as awful as slavery, he found a way to like turn it on its head. You yeah. Know? But, um, you know, for the most part, he chose to live incredibly simply. Like, we're talking sleeping in public, begging for food. Yeah, that's that's next level commitment. Like, he clearly was not afraid of, of discomfort. So, okay, like, what was the point of all this? What was he trying to prove? Well, he was demonstrating the core cynical principle of self-sufficiency. Okay. And for Diogenes, this wasn't just about, you know, material things. It was about being free from desire. Desire for possessions, for status, for comfort. Right. He really believed that true freedom came from wanting less, not acquiring more. And he famously said something along the lines of like defacing the currency. Okay. Now he didn't mean literally defacing money. Right, right. He meant like the societal values that he saw as corrupt. Gotcha. And a great example of this is, you know, there's that famous story about Diogenes and, um, and Alexander the Great, right. arguably the most powerful man in the world at the time. Yeah. And Alexander, he's so impressed by Diogenes, he goes up to him and is like, hey, is there anything I could do for you? Wow. And Diogenes responds, yeah, stop blocking my sunlight. Mike Straub. I know. He's like, he's calling out the, the absurdity of Alexander's quest for all this, this power and everything. And Diogenes is like, dude, I just need some sunshine. Exactly. Yeah, and I kind of love that, but, um, this idea of shamelessness, right? Oh, yeah. Which was a big part of cynicism. Right. That's a little bit of a tougher one, I think, to wrap your head around. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's definitely misunderstood. Right. Because, you know, Diogenes wasn't out to, like, offend people just to offend them. Okay. So, like, you know, there's stories of him, like, urinating in public. And when he did things that were considered, you know, socially unacceptable. Yeah. He was making a point. Right. He was challenging these arbitrary social norms. Right. It's like he was saying, you think that's shocking? What about the hypocrisy of like all of our values? Yeah. You know? He's trying to like wake people up a little bit. Exactly. So it's not just about being like inappropriate. It's about You're starting a conversation. Yeah. Starting a conversation. Exactly. And proving a point about what we all just kind of go along with as being normal. Exactly. Exactly. And he also, I mean, he really believed in calling people out too right like and not just through these like stunts and stuff but uh, yeah he was known for being very outspoken absolutely and he was um you know scathingly honest especially with people in power right yeah. he saw hypocrisy everywhere and he just he wouldn't let it slide wow. you know and i think that this outspokenness it was it was really fundamental to his philosophy right it was about holding up a mirror to society and mm -hmm. saying like we can do better 
Yeah. So, okay, so this guy, sleeping in a barrel, challenging emperors. Like, yeah. how does this connect to us today, right? <laughs> I mean, we're not all going to ditch our smartphones and, right. you know, go live in a, in a clay pot somewhere. Right. So, like, what's the takeaway? Well, maybe not. But, um, but think about it this way. Our world today, it's, it's obsessed with stuff, with mm -hmm. status, with, with fitting in. Right. And Diogenes, I think, challenges us to ask, like, how much is enough? Right. Are we letting our possessions, our, our need for validation from others define us? Yeah. And I think that this idea of, of like training yourself to need less, to find freedom and simplicity, that's just as relevant today as it was back then. Totally. It's like, it's like a, a more hardcore version maybe of like mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Or even those like minimalist movements we see today, mm. you know, just simplifying your life mm. to focus on what truly matters. He's like the patron saint of like spring cleaning, but for like your soul. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and don't forget, you know, he was fearless in standing up to authority. Right. Calling out hypocrisy. And, you know, I think that's something we could all, we could all use a little bit more of. Totally. So I think, you know, maybe next time you find yourself, uh, scrolling through endless online shopping options or stressing about, you know, what other people think of you, channel your inner Diogenes. Right. Ask yourself, what would Diogenes do? Exactly. You might be surprised. Totally. Yo, wake up with purpose, feel that fire in your chest. Life's a gift, man. Breathe it in, give it your best. Stars in the sky, a mirror of what's inside. Change is the game, let your spirit be your guide. So rain in my unbreakable recipe. Control your thoughts, find the strength, set yourself free. Can you fly in a world full of noise and stress? The truth lies within you, put your soul to the test. Anger burns hot, but revenge leaves you cold Kindness is the weapon, that's how the story's told Don't judge a book by its cover, look deeper instead Find the good in everyone, let that wisdom spread Stole right in mind, unbreakable recipe Control your thoughts, find the strength to set yourself free Your thoughts, find the strength to set yourself free Opinions flying, the world full of noise and stress The truth lies within you Put your soul to the test Yeah, they try to knock you down Throw obstacles your way But you rise above the drama Five peace every day The happiness of your life depends on the quality of thoughts Keep that fire burning bright The power you got Slow it, mind unbreakable That's a key Control your thoughts, find the strength To set yourself free Can you fly in Fate throws the curveball, but you adapt, never fold. The past is gone, the future untold. Live in the moment, that's where the true power lies. A stoic warrior, wisdom in your eyes. If it is not right, do not do it, keep it real. The soul becomes die with the color of its thoughts. How you feel? Oh, unbreakable, find the strength within You got this, no doubt, the victory you'll win Critics talk loud, try to dim your inner light But they ain't worth your time, rise above the petty fight Remember everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact Stay true to your path, keep your integrity intact It's not death a man should fear, but never beginning to live So seize the day, let your spirit soar, got so much to give Focus on the good, leave the negativity behind. Stow with warrior state of mind. That's the legacy you'll find. It's the negative. So the second thing you need to do is you need to select the people in your circle of influence who are going to help you make your dreams become a reality. Let me just be honest with you. I ain't trying to dog nobody out. But if, pe if your friends are putting you in a position where you drinking and you smoking and you high, they're not your real friends. I'm not, I'm, I'm not su suggesting that you stop hanging with them. My boy, Anthony Flynn, my guy, my business partner. Anthony Flynn said, if you want to make it to the New York Times, you got to hire Rory. 
So I had a friend who connected me with a friend to help me make my dreams become a reality. If you have people in your circle, I don't care what they call themselves, friend. They're not a friend, they are a foe. If the person is not helping you to elevate, but what they're doing is destroying you, you can label it friend, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but they're destroying you and you are a fool to let somebody destroy you in your dreams. And let me tell you why. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. But at some point, I, I don't care what we all believe in this room. This is what we all have in common. We all believe we're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Everybody in this room, amen. I don't care how, I don't care if you're working out every day, you're not gonna make it to 250 working out. It's not about to happen. I don't care what kind of drink you look on, you got your little green juice you drink, you can drink it till you're blue in the face. You're not gonna make it to 200. I'm just being honest, you're not gonna make it to 200. And if you make it to 100, you probably won't have your youth. So because you don't live long, you don't have time not to make your dreams and goals become reality. Every single day, because you don't know how long you have, every single day should be about what can I do? What can I have? What can I be? And you got to hang out with other people. Don't make hopes. Hopes will create expectations and expectation makes you weaker. Do not cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. There are no constraints on the human mind, no walls around the human spirit, no barriers to our progress except those we ourselves erect. Ronald Reagan Trust yourself. You've survived a lot, and you'll survive whatever is coming. Have faith in what will be. You have to build calluses on your brain just like how you build calluses on your hands. Callous your mind through pain and suffering. David Goggins To a person who was one of those who was not valued by him, a certain person said to him, Frequently I desired to hear you and came to you and you never gave me any answer. And now, if it is possible, I entreat you to say something to me. Do you think, said Epictetus, that as there is an art in anything else, so there is also an art in speaking, and that he who has the art will speak skillfully, and he who has not will speak unskillfully? I do think so. He then, who by speaking receives benefit himself and is able to benefit others, will speak skillfully. But he who is rather damaged by speaking and does damage to others, will he be unskilled in this art of speaking? And you may find that some are damaged and others benefited by speaking. And are all who hear benefited by what they hear? Or will you find that among them also some are benefited and some damaged? There are both among these also, he said. In this case also then, those who hear skillfully are benefited, and those who hear unskillfully are damaged. He admitted this. Is there then a skill in hearing also, as there is in speaking? It seems so. If you choose, consider the matter in this way also. The practice of music. To whom does it belong? To a musician. And the proper making of a statue. To whom do you think that it belongs? To a statuary. And the looking at a statue skillfully, does this appear to you to require the aid of no art? This also requires the aid of art. Then if speaking properly is the business of the skillful man, do you see that to hear also with benefit is the business of the skillful man? Now as to speaking and hearing perfectly and usefully, let us for the present, if you please, say no more for both of us are a long way from everything of the kind. But I think that every man will allow this, that he who is going to hear philosophers requires some amount of practice in hearing. Is it not so? 
Tell me then about what I should talk to you. About what matter are you able to listen? About good and evil. Good and evil in what? In a horse? No. Well, in an ox? No. What then? In a man? Yes. Do know then what a man is, what the notion is that we have of him, or have we our ears in any degree practiced about this matter? But do you understand what nature is? Or can you even in any degree understand me when I say, I shall use demonstration to you? How? Do you understand this very thing? What demonstration is, or how anything is demonstrated? Or by what means? Or what things are like demonstration, but are not demonstration? Do you know what is true, or what is false? What is consequent on a thing? What is repugnant to a thing? Or not consistent, or inconsistent? But must I excite you to philosophy, and how? Shall I show to you the repugnance in the opinions of most men, through which they differ about things good and evil, and about things which are profitable and unprofitable, when you know not this very thing what repugnance is? Show me then what I shall accomplish by discoursing with you. Excite my inclination to do this, as the grass which is suitable when it is presented to a sheep moves its inclination to eat. But if you present to it a stone or bread, it will not be moved to eat. So there are in us certain natural inclinations also to speak, when the hearer shall appear to be somebody, when he himself shall excite us. But when he shall sit by us like a stone or like grass, how can he excite a man's desire? Does the vine say to the husbandman, Take care of me? No. But the vine by showing in itself that it will be profitable to the husbandman, if he does take care of it, invites him to exercise care. When children are attractive and lively, whom do they not invite to play with them, and crawl with them, and lisp with them? But who is eager to play with an ass or to bray with it? For though it is small, it is still a little ass. Why then do you say nothing to me? I can only say this to you, that he who knows not who he is, and for what purpose he exists, and what is this world and with whom he is associated, and what things are the good and the bad and the beautiful and the ugly, and who neither understands discourse nor demonstration, nor what is true nor what is false, and who is not able to distinguish them, will neither desire according to nature, nor turn away, nor move upward, nor intend, nor assent, nor dissent, nor suspend his judgment. To say all in a few words, he will go about dumb and blind, thinking that he is somebody but being nobody. Is this so now for the first time? Is it not the fact that, ever since the human race existed, all errors and misfortunes have arisen through this ignorance? Why did Agamemnon and Achilles quarrel with one another? Was it not through not knowing what things are profitable and not profitable? Does not the one say it is profitable to restore Chryseis to her father? And does not the other say that it is not profitable? Does not the one say that he ought to take the prize of another? And does not the other say that he ought not? Did they not for these reasons forget both who they were and for what purpose they had come there? O oh, man, for what purpose did you come? To gain mistresses or to fight? To fight? With whom? The Trojans or the Hellenes? With the Trojans? Do you then leave Hector alone and draw your sword against your own king? And do you, most excellent